Hello. So today I want to talk briefly about uh, the A500 Mini, uh, which is this uh, tiny thing here, um, um, which is essentially an emulated Amiga 500, although it can also emulate a 1200. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is not so much a hardware review uh, or even a software review per se. Uh, there are plenty of videos uh, online about this. Uh, rather, what I wanted to talk about briefly is uh, why this is a helpful machine uh, for my particular needs and I suspect for uh, possibly others as well. Um, it's certainly not a machine for uh, people who own the real hardware. Um, nothing beats using real hardware in my view. Uh, but for those of us who've never had uh, Amigas and are intrigued by them either for their games, which are really awesome, uh, at least for the time, and uh, as well as their, uh, the development capabilities, uh, the potential, actually, I should say, uh, of this machine. Uh, for me, um, I love the Amiga games. Um, I've never really dealt in them before, and I've been having a lot of fun with the 25 or so games included with the machine. And um, there are literally thousands available for download online, and they are easily transferable or usable on this machine via USB stick. Again, uh, how you do this is beyond the, uh, the scope of what I'm trying to do here. Um, you can check it out online. Um, so for me, uh, particularly, I'm interested in uh, doing some development on the Amiga. Uh, I've never uh, developed uh, on a machine, uh, on a retro machine, I should say, that had a graphical user interface. Um, all my machines were text-based, and like CPM or the TI or the Coleco Atom, etc. Um, there is no graphical programming environment, so I was really intrigued by that. Now, this machine is essentially a games machine. However, um, with uh, the new firmware update 1.1.1, I believe, um, it now supports the addition of uh, floppy disk images uh, .adfs. Um, for the Amiga. And so that opens the door for uh, installing or using Workbench um, and then basically it becomes a, uh, a real a productive Amiga. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. Um, I've gotten uh, floppy disk images of Workbench 1.3 uh, along with the uh, Extras disk which has the uh, uh, the Amiga Basic program on it, and I also have a uh, a blank ADF which I use as a work disk. And um, I'll go ahead and uh, and show you um, how this works. Um, everything is uh, on a USB stick here. All the disk images are here, and um, so it's really super easy to get going with this. All right, so first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and navigate to the uh, USB stick right here. And as you can see, I have Workbench 1.33, I have Workbench Extras 1.3, and a blank disk. Um, with the A500 Mini, you can actually have uh, uh, up to three disks um, ready for use uh, in real time uh, inside Workbench. You can actually have more than that if you create uh, playlists uh, and there are uh, descriptions online on how to do this. But for my purposes, three, uh, blank, uh, three disks are more than enough. So first I select the main workbench disk and then um, I go over, go to the extras disk and simply uh, click the, uh, the right button um, on the uh, controller to add it. Um, to the list and then finally the blank disk is added the same way. So now we have uh, Workbench, the extras disk and a blank disk all available for use inside Workbench. And then I just hit the home start and uh, that should load uh, Workbench. Um, it's not particularly fast. Um, I don't know honestly how long it took on a, uh, a real Amiga to load Workbench from disk. Um, I have no comparison but um, yeah, it takes probably a minute or so uh, to get going uh, here, so let's give it a second. Well, as you can see, I mean, um, it uh, looks and feels exactly like uh, a real Amiga, um, at least from 
<laughs> from what I've seen online um, since I've never owned really one before. Um, this is uh, the command line interface here. Um, by the way, I did get some manuals to get me going. I've got an Amiga Basic uh, manual, a really good book, and Amiga DOS, uh, which I plan on reading as well to get familiar with the command line interface. And uh, I understand that this opens up quite a bit of options for the Amiga. Should be almost there. There we are. Okay, so at this point in time, um, I'm in Workbench. Um, and it behaves exactly like uh, you would expect. Um, it's just got all the, uh, the drawers that you need. It's got the shell, etc. Um, but uh, what I want is I want to uh, program uh, in Amiga Basic. And so I do need to put the, uh, insert the uh, extras disk which contains the Amiga Basic uh, program. And to do so, you just press the home on the controller. You press the home key and the right button, and then that selects the next disk, which is disk two, and that's the extras disk. So it takes a second; it'll load, and there it is. So now um, all we have to do is just open it up, like like usual. And you can swap disks. Uh, basically, this emulates a single disk Amiga 500, uh, the way I have it set up right now, um, which is the uh, most common configuration back in the day. So um, here's Amiga Basic. Double click on it and it will get started. Uh, for those of you who have used it, um, this is a very uh, familiar site, I'm sure. Um, there we are. So um, I can uh, load the program. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what is it? basic demos never mind I could actually have done a directory straight from Amiga basic um, I'll show you in a second here how you do that so I could have done actually instead of exiting Amiga basic just did the files and then give me the directory of uh, of the disk and we can see here that the basic demo file uh, basic demos is here anyway so let's load the program uh, so what is it, uh, basic demos, forward slash, picture. All right, so now it's loaded, we list the program, there it is, um, and we can run it, and there we go. So, um, obviously this is just the, uh, the, uh, the program that uh, is in the demo folder you can do whatever uh, you want oops uh, you can do whatever you want with it um, but uh, it's really usable um, and um, you can save to a different uh, disk which I usually do let's say we want to save this program to the work disk, which is with the blank disk that I have uh, online as a third disk. So all we have to do is save work and let's call it test. All right, and it'll ask me to end to insert the, uh, the work disk. So there we are. That's the third disk. Press retry. Okay, it's saved. So let's exit. And we have the work disk here. If we double click on it, there we are, and there's our program. So um, that's permanently saved on the disk, uh, and on the disk image, I should say. Uh, nothing is physical here. Um, and you can retrieve it later. You can make copies of that disk image for uh, archival purposes, etc. All right. So that's basically um, the uh, the use that I make of the A500 Mini. Um, it suits me just fine, and you know, it, uh, I can avoid uh, the expensive purchase of a real Amiga. 
plus all the necessary add-ons required um, to run the various games, not to mention having real floppy disks, although these days you can probably buy an SD-based solution, I'm sure there is uh, one available or more. Uh, but anyway, this all adds up to a lot of expense. Uh, Amiga's working fi Amiga 500s or 1200s uh, cost quite a bit on eBay, um, and um, even then, you know, there's no assurance of longevity. There might be caps that need to be replaced or uh, other hardware issues, etc. Not to mention that all the the add-on hardware costs money as well. So you can easily. Uh, dump $500 um, on a working Amiga 500 at a minimum um, to get the same setup that I have here. Um, so yeah, um, this is an alternative for those of us who uh, have not used Amigas before and uh, want to experience what it was like to use one back in the day. That's it. Thank you for watching.